Hello and welcome to our parents and carers information session this evening. Tonight we are going to be talking about how you can have meaningful career conversations with your young person. We are really pleased to have so many parents and carers joining us from all around Scotland tonight. And as a parent or carer, you're a key influencer in your young person's career planning. We're looking forward to sharing some advice and resources with you over the next 20 minutes or so. I'm Kay, a careers advisor based in Highland, and tonight I'm joined by my colleague Joan, also based in the Highland region. We have both been careers advisors for a long time and have worked in schools which almost cover the length and breadth of Scotland. What we found is that the concerns parents and carers have for their young person's future choices are similar wherever you go. So just a few wee things before we get started. This session is being recorded for anyone who couldn't make it along this evening. We can't see or hear you tonight, but if you would like to make any comments or ask any questions, please use the Q&A box to the right of the screen. We are joined tonight by Marianne, Linda and two Jemas who will be doing some great work behind the scenes, answering any questions and sharing some helpful links to resources that we talk about this evening. We also have time at the end of the presentation to answer questions. Your comments are also anonymous. If you hear something tonight that you don't get a chance to write down, please don't worry as the session is being recorded and will be available on our website, My World of Work, for you to listen to again. This webinar is a very general overview of having career conversations. If you feel you need more information after tonight, please feel free to contact your young person's careers advisor in school or call our helpline on 0800 917 8000. Please don't worry if you haven't managed to note these down. I'll mention contact details again at the end of the session and any useful links that we talk about will be emailed to you. I'm going to move on now to talk about some research that was carried out seeking the views from parents and carers about their role and influence on their young person's education, employment and training. The research tells us that parents and carers are the biggest influence on a young person's career choices. Parents and carers have stated that they try to encourage their young people to choose a career that they will be good at and that they enjoy and they wanted to make sure that their young person kept their options open for as long as possible. These are both really positive points, but contrary to these, parents and carers spoke of concerns about pressurising their children and of difficulties in advising young people if they had no ideas about what they wanted to do. Some reported concerns about a lack of knowledge about the changing nature of the labour market and knowledge about how new jobs that did not exist when they were young. From here, Joan is going to take a look at how the world of work is changing and how this might affect the ways in which young people approach their career choices. Thank you, Kay. We know that starting a career conversation may seem overwhelming as you feel you don't know where to begin, but whether you realise it or not, you've probably been having these conversations since your child was young. When we ask questions like, what do you want to be when you're older? Or as their parent or carer, when you can see certain qualities in your young person, and you might say something like, I think you'll become an artist, an engineer, or will maybe get a job where you are caring for others. Or you notice that they have an aptitude for certain subjects and say something like, I think you are really good at maths or history. And you may start to link these with certain career areas. This is you talking about their future and in that their career. As Kay mentioned, research tells us that parents and carers are the biggest influence on their children's career decisions, which would suggest that meaningful career conversations are important. But we get it, things may have changed since you were in their shoes. Exams may be different, subjects may be different, and the world of work has changed forever. And it can be difficult to start the chat about ambitions and choices, but hopefully after tonight's session, you will begin to feel a bit more confident in having these conversations and where to get the right information to support you. 
We will now show a short two minute video that describes why and in what ways the world of work is changing. Don't worry if you can't hear it, it's just music and all the text will be seen on the screen. As the video demonstrates, the world of work is changing at an incredible pace. Industry 4.0, demographic trends, Brexit, climate change and the global pandemic are challenges that have only begun to emerge. This can feel confusing, leaving people not sure which road or path to go down. All jobs are changing in some way with growth in some sectors and technological change. It is important that we create a future where young people develop abilities to keep learning in a world that keeps changing and having the confidence to be adaptive and resilient. As careers advisors, we work with people of all ages to develop career management skills. These aim to support people in their awareness of their own abilities. I'll hand over to Kay now, who will look more at career management skills. Thanks, Joan. We feel it's hugely important for individuals to have an awareness of themselves, the opportunities available and who can help them to reach their career goal. Skills Development Scotland developed the Career Management Skills Framework. And this framework is what careers advisors use to help individuals manage their careers for themselves. So first of all, we look at self. This is about who am I? It's about getting to know who you are, what you can do, and what's the right thing for you. Some questions you could think about to approach self would be things like, what do you like doing? What sort of environment do you see yourself working in? For example, do you like being outdoors or would you prefer an indoor job? Or how do you behave when you like or dislike something? Another area we look at is strengths. 
and this is about getting to know and understand the things that you're good at. It's about your strengths and how you use them in different ways. Questions to dig deeper into finding out more about strengths may include, what do you feel you're best at in school or in your personal life? Or what do other people tell you you do well? Another area of career management skills is horizons. This is about looking ahead and getting to know what's out there in the world of work. It's all about understanding what jobs are available, what industries are and all the ways you can get ready for a job. You may want to ask them, do you have any ideas about the future? What are they? Or what do you think are some of the options available to you? And we also look at networks. This is about the people around you and how they can help you get to where you want to be. You may want to ask, who do you see every day that might be able to help reach who you see every day that will help you be able to reach your career choices? Who do you know in school or out of school from your activities that may be able to help you get some more information? Conversations may have changed along the way, and in particular, as it comes closer to leaving school. We would advocate that there is no wrong path. Your young person will get to their destination if you help them keep their options open and to explore different routes if required. Routes can include training, college, foundation, modern or graduate apprenticeships, university or volunteering, for example, and we'll supply links to these in our follow up guide. There is often more than one pathway to get to your chosen career, and we would encourage research to find the best route for your young person. Imagine this is your child and they're going to climb this mountain. Now that might seem like a big task, just like your child trying to figure out what they want to do with their life can seem like a big task. Like climbing a mountain, there can be many things that can throw them off their course, but also lots of people and opportunities that can help them on their way. We will go on to have a look at what young people have said about the help they would like from their parents and carers. The National Parent Forum of Scotland asked young people for their comments and suggestions as to how they could be helped with their course and career choices. There were many positive responses and when looking at these we can see that young people are on the whole asking for help, encouragement and to be asked about their choices. They said things such as, help us to find out what will make us good at our jobs, help us to explore possibilities and help us to say out loud what we'd really like to do, help us to think about the vital qualities needed for a job, help us to have the skills to explore our options. Encourage us, encourage us to do more work experience in the holidays and at weekends, encourage us to keep as many options open as possible and to think about what we really enjoy. Encourage us to have our own ideas and to take charge of our own destiny. And ask us, ask us questions like what do you like doing? And if you could choose any career, what could you choose? So this section has been a very brief insight into what young people are asking of their parents and carers. You can get support at any time of day with many of these by simply visiting the My World of Work parents section online. The National Parent Forum of Scotland have also published some advice on things that you could consider saying to your young person. I'm going to hand back over to Joan now to have a look at these scenarios in more detail. Thank you, Kay. It is common for young people to say they have no ideas what they want to do in the future. This can be positive as it starts with a blank canvas to form ideas onto and there is no harm in you starting these conversations early. Take some time to listen and ask questions. Try to be patient and open to what your young person says. You can encourage them to be aware of the jobs that people are doing around them, to speak to people they know and to do research on My World of Work. And this is about them becoming their own detective to find out what they want. You can offer help and support, but in the end, they have to decide for themselves. Your young person may be focused on one career, which can be a good place to start, but often we find young people get to the point of leaving school and realise what they'd always thought they wanted to do is no longer their wish. 
or that they hadn't focused on the appropriate subjects and extracurricular activities to get them into this area. Think of their particular interest as a starting point to explore and discuss other options that may be related to their original idea. Encourage them to find out about other industries and areas, either independently or with you. What interests them about that particular job? And are there other jobs with the same skill set or qualifications required? So research and discuss the different types of jobs that are relevant to that area of interest. Another scenario we are often faced with is that a young person may say they want to be a rock star, an inventor, a dancer, a YouTuber, an influencer or a computer games designer, for example. Parents and carers worry about how realistic their young person's career ideas are. These may seem out of reach to you, but they are real jobs that people do and we can't predict what our young people might achieve. For young people, knowing what they enjoy doing is a great starting point. Encourage them to find out more either independently or with you. If they are serious about an idea, they will be keen to know more. You could ask questions such as, what do you know already about this career idea and area? What particular aspect do you like? Encourage them to research and discuss the different types of jobs that are relevant to their interest and get in touch with someone already doing the job and ask them about how they started their career. You may have heard us mention My World of Work, which is our careers website. Packed full of tools, articles, advice and information to help you and your young person. We're going to spend a few minutes showing you where to find some useful resources to help familiarise yourself with the site. This is the My World of Work homepage and as you scroll down, you will see that there is a tab for parents and carers. By clicking here, you will be taken to our parents and carers section, giving you information on how to register for a free account. As well as highlighting support you can get from My World of Work, such as support with option choices, exam results, industry areas and CV and application advice. Further down the page, there are links to information on routes such as apprenticeships and education and training. We also have information on tools, wellbeing support, links to our parent and carer webinar series recordings and information about our career service. By scrolling back to the top of the page, you will see that there are tabs with lots more support and information. If you click on the My Career Options section, you can explore careers using the 600 job profiles available. As you can see, they come under a variety of job sectors. These job profiles highlight the various routes available into certain careers, as well as information on what the job involves and what skills are useful. We will ensure all relevant links are added to our follow-up guide, which will be made available after the webinar. And now Kay is going to look at some top tips for you to consider. Thank you, Joan. So hopefully this presentation has inspired some ideas of having a career conversation with your young person. Here are some of our top tips to help. Engage. Engage in conversations with your young person. Maybe talking about what they like or they don't like or checking in every now and again to find out if they have what the, if they've had thoughts about what they'd like to do. Explore jobs, training or course ideas, finding up to date information on my world of work. Encourage them to aim for what they want and to find the right information on how to get there. Be enthusiastic about their ideas, remembering that all ideas are a starting point to work from. 
and educate both yourselves and your young person on their areas of interest and how to get the right information and support. So that's us coming to the end of the presentation. We understand there's lots of information to take in, but please don't worry if you feel you've missed anything. As mentioned at the start, the session has been recorded, so you'll be able to access it again. You can also contact Careers Advisor at the school your young person attends or by calling our helpline on 0800 917 8000 Monday to Friday 9 to 5. You can also access help online via My World of Work or by visiting our Facebook or Twitter channels. SDS is here to support you as a parent or carer and also as part of our All Age Career Guidance Service. We would like to remind you that our website for adults, careers.myworldofwork.co.uk and in addition, we run an excellent series of webinars, Positive Steps to Career Success, which cover everything you need to manage your career and job search effectively. You can check what's coming up and register for our webinars on careers.myworldofwork.co.uk. So we've had quite a few questions coming in throughout the session, which have been dealt with behind the scenes, but there's also a few that are quite similar inquiries. So Joan and I are going to try and answer those live as they may be of interest to everyone. So one of the first things that came in was, are there benefits to staying on at school in the current climate? Now, as a careers advisor, what I would say is that staying on at school can be a chance to build on existing qualifications or to try new subjects. For example, if your young person stays on to S5 or 6, they may want to try a foundation apprenticeship that they haven't had the chance to do before. Or many local colleges offer day link courses for pupils who are still at school. But it's important to recognise that a young person will only benefit from being at school if they're able to choose subjects and activities that, are, that they're going to gain from. So they may benefit from being out of school. And I think if there's any concerns about your young person leaving school, I would advise them to have a discussion with a careers advisor who will help them decide what the best thing to do is. On to another question which came up during the video was, what is Industry 4.0? So Industry 4.0 is the fourth industrial revolution. It's the rise in digital technology and ongoing automation of traditional manufacturing and industrial practices using modern and smart technology. And just on that note, another term that um, somebody asked about was FinTech, which was also mentioned on the video. So FinTech is a shortened version of finance and technology. So this refers to businesses that use technology to enhance or automate financial services and processes. It includes things like mobile banking, mobile payments, kind of cryptocurrency, insurance and trading. So Joan, we've had a question about the different types of apprenticeships that we mentioned in the presentation and it reads, you talked about different types of apprenticeships. I've never heard of some of these. Now, would you be happy to go over the apprenticeship family for us? Yes, of course. So what I'd say is not to worry. Basically, the apprenticeship family is growing. Some of you might have already heard about modern apprenticeships. These have been around for a long time and are available when someone has left school. An individual is employed by a company and they attend college for block release to gain the academic part of the qualification or they do all of their learning and qualification in the workplace. Foundation apprenticeships are newer and are available in the main to S5 and S6 pupils. They are chosen as part of the normal subject choice options and a pupil will then have industry insights with a company whilst doing an academic level qualification, usually to the same level as a higher, either in school or with a college. I would suggest checking with your own school what foundation apprenticeships are available in your own area. Graduate apprenticeships were developed to help build the skills and knowledge that Scottish industries need. Whilst in employment, an individual will work towards a degree level qualification at university or college. 
there's loads more information about apprenticeships and the apprenticeship family and that can be found on apprenticeships.scot and we can also pop up that web address into the q a box there's another question here that's come in and it's um, saying my daughter doesn't listen to me. How can I support? So we completely understand the frustrations in trying to have conversations as a parent or carer and our advice is often not taken. It might help to look at sites like My World of Work that can really help to give you confidence to mention things or to answer questions when they do ask for help. Please don't struggle though, we are here to help you and if you're not sure how to have these conversations or you don't feel you can be impartial, then please contact your young person's careers advisor in school and they would be more than happy to help you. Kay, would you like to take this next question? How do we find work experience opportunities? Yep, no bother. Thank you, Joan. So there's a dedicated section on the My World of Work website and this looks at work experience in more detail. This is a good starting point for finding out more information about how to get work experience and how to develop the skills you might need for the world of work. But we'd also recommend using networks by con contacting people you know or by getting in touch with a company. It looks good if a young person can do this for themselves and they can seek the support of their guidance teacher, the schools developing the young workforce worker or they could speak to their careers advisor for ideas. So on to a question now that reads, we've recently moved. My child went to school in England until she was 15 and we don't know how to get her qualifications correlated to the Scottish equivalent. So please don't worry about this. This is fairly common and there's really easy to follow information and guidance on the Scottish Qualification Authority website under the section titled Qualifications Can Cross Boundaries, where UK qualifications are compared. And we'll pop a link to this in the chat. Joan, are you happy to take the next question? Yes, of course. Um, we've had a question come in that's asking if there's help for additional support needs pupils and absolutely yes there is. I would suggest it's good to have a chat with the key person who supports your young person in school and make links with the school's careers advisor and other professionals that may be supporting your young person. We would encourage having conversations with their support network early as it helps to reassure you that there is support available. You can also find out about post school support from them that would be tailored to your young person's needs. This next question that's come in is something we mentioned earlier and it is that things have changed since I left school. What's the best advice I can give my son? So hopefully we've been able to give you some information to help you feel more confident and we'll send out all the links that we've been discussing tonight. But please remember we're here to help if you feel you need more support. Do get in touch with your young person's school careers advisor or if your young person has left school, get in touch with your nearest Skills Development Scotland Centre where a careers advisor would also be happy to help. And not forgetting my world of work, parents and carers section. OK, do you want to take the next couple of questions? Yep, that's grand, Joan. Thank you. And actually, this one just relates to what you were just saying there. Um, the question reads, how does my child contact a careers advisor if they don't know how to do this? So I think the best starting point is to ask their guidance teacher at school. They'll know how to get in touch with the careers advisor. And another question we've had in is, my daughter wants to start working and she's only 14. What are the rules? So it's my understanding that the rules can vary depending on the local authority that you live in. So please refer to your local authority website, which will have some useful information. Another great source of information is the Young Scott website. It has a useful section listing different types of work that young people can do and at what age. 
So when we're considering young people's ages, there's another question here that links to this by asking, are universities keen for young people to come straight from school or do they prefer them to take a year or two out? So thank you, that is a really good question. I would say that this really depends on the university and the course that they're applying for. Some courses may expect some work experience gained during a young person's time at school and some others may appreciate a bit more life experience gained over time through working or volunteering. Universities and colleges all have student support departments and they're happy to answer any inquiries that you might have. Their contact details can be found on their websites. Joan, we've had a question through that asks, if my child intends to leave school at the end of S4 to continue studying at college, what will they need? Are you happy to go with this for us? Yes, yes, I'll take that question. So that would depend on the course that they have in mind as well as the level that the course is at, as each college and course will have different entry requirements. I would recommend that your young person discuss this option with their careers advisor and guidance or pastoral support teacher as they will be able to give a more tailored answer. Another question we've have we've been asked is, does it matter that they don't know what they want to do after school and absolutely not. At this stage, we are really just encouraging them to start to develop their career management skills, which will help them as they progress through school to understand what options might be right for them. Not everyone knows exactly what they want to do and your young person's career ideas might change as they get older. And I think that's important to consider. Everyone reaches decisions at different times through different ways and some people need to take more time to get to know themselves. We see a lot of pupils who are really unsure about what they want to do and by working with us, and with you as their parents and carers and other people in their networks of support, they will gain more confidence and knowledge to explore their options. Okay, I could take this next question as I mentioned it earlier in the presentation, and it's how do I persuade my son that becoming a YouTuber is not a real career? So, as we were talking about earlier, the world of work is changing rapidly. Being a YouTuber is something that has become very popular in the last couple of years. In fact, I don't know about you, but often half the celebrity contestants on TV shows are social media influencers and YouTubes. And I could not honestly tell you who they were, but I am sure my own teenagers could. Some of the main skills a YouTuber would, would need are very transferable skills, such as technological and research skills, communication skills, attention to detail, problem solving, planning and organisational skills. So you can see that there are lots of great skills which employers really value and they can be used in a huge number of different jobs. It would be important to recognise that not everyone can make this their full time career. So we would always recommend having backup plans and as mentioned in the top tips earlier, engage in the conversations with them, listen and check their understanding of how to make this a career. So moving on from here, we have a question that is along the same lines of what jobs are going to be available in three years time. Kay, do you want to answer that question? Yes, thank you for that, Joan. Um, so we've talked a lot about the changing labour market and new jobs that are emerging. The question came up even before the pandemic. The world of work is changing fast and even though some people like to have certainties, we can't be entirely sure of what's coming. But if we think back to the video and some of the skills that were talked about in the video, so it mentioned things like there was being adaptive and resilient, problem solving, critical thinking, uh, there was creativity and, and communication. So all these skills will help somebody for any job that they aim for and having skills to manage the changing world around them. 
I think we've maybe got time for one final question that's come through and I think it's maybe quite important. Um, so what about option choices? And I suspect that's come through because lots of young people are going through their option choices at the moment. So the question read, what advice would you give to me to help my son with option choices? So I'd say that having career conversations around what your son is good at and enjoys in any career areas that might be of interest could be really helpful. Um, it's important that a young people choose subjects based on their needs and wants and do not choose things just because their friends are doing it or that they like the teacher that they have at the time, for example. It would be really useful to research information available from the school regarding the options and this information is usually made available in plenty of time prior to making the choices and also remember about the option choices tool in my world of work. It's important that people select a timetable that they will enjoy and that they hope to do well in and that they're in line with their career goal or to allow their options to be kept open if they don't know what they want to do. So there are, there's a recorded webinar on My World of Work to support parents and carers with option choices, which I would encourage you to watch. So that's us coming to the end of our session on having meaningful career conversations. I'd like to thank you for joining us this evening. We hope you found it helpful and hopefully we were able to answer most of the questions coming through. But apologies if we've missed anything or we weren't able to answer you directly. As we mentioned, please get in touch with your local SDS Career Centre or contact your school careers advisor if you've got any further questions. So from Joan and myself and the team behind the scenes, thank you and good night.